On this episode of Content Sessions, we talked to Anne Renshaw about designing little spaces. Thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for asking me. <laughs> um, I wanted to I wanted to know because we obviously I have a much smaller space on the other side. Uh, how much do you charge? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, well, we might have to talk after about that. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I wanted to know a little bit about, uh, obviously I know your daughter, I know Chris, and we've done some work together and played around. They highly suggested that I talk to you to your disagreement, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, tell me a little bit about your business. Um, this uh, design initiative that I'm working through with right now is, um, I've been at it for five years. Um, it came out of a need for um, to, to develop a new business, a new creative business. In my old business, I'd become a dinosaur, mm. right? And um, I got this idea. Uh, I think it was a collection of ideas that just gelled one day and it was epiphanous. Mm. It's quite wonderful, actually. And um, I got this idea that people like me that were older were living in these houses, big spaces, by themselves, and how uh, a lot of money tied up in it, and how do you make it work for you? Which is the big, which, which part of the house is most unused? Which is the garage? Sure. Every, nobody uses their garage. Mm. So the business developed from that. I did some research, and uh, found out that um, uh, baby boomers are supporting aging parents and millennials in the same in the same space. So I found there was a need to rework um, a typical. Um, suburban bungalow into something that's workable for a family that's quite different from how from the people it was built for in the first place mm. so it was how to divide the space up for three different generations privacy you know lots of bathrooms lots of cooking facilities that kind of thing how do you do that plus taking some money out of your mortgage or whatever and um, making it work for you yeah, it's super practical. I mean, if you, especially if you look at all the issues Vancouver's having right now, where yeah. like they're renting mansions to students because nobody has a clue what's going on, and yeah. everyone's got too much space or a shoebox, and uh, it's obviously very frustrating. And it's funny in a lot of countries, there's a lot of people that already do kind of what you're kind of helping to. They're already like you live with the next generation, you move the older people in, and you've got the kids for a longer period of time, and the grandparents take care of the kids, like. It, you know, very community and family oriented and it feels like you're kind of helping to facilitate a little bit more of that feel. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah it's great. a wave of what's coming. It's here. It's here. Yeah. yeah. And so, <laughs> um, how did you, let's take kind of a step back from this business to where you were before. How did you kind of come to this? Oh, well, my, uh, my first discipline is um, exhibition design. So working with, in a commercial sense, working with all of the, um, um, all of the services, you know, uh, electricity, power, all the power services, um, it was a natural step to move into um, the residential realm after the, that, that business finished, that business was gone. Right. Um, so I just educated myself and got clients and repeat clients and old clients and, <laughs> yeah. and just developed it. <laughs> was the previous business a business of yours as well? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then how did you kind of uh, come about it? Did you, you were talking a little bit before mm -hmm. uh, about how you went to school for design. So right. to take me back through that a little. Yeah, I was uh, born in England. I went to school in England. I went to Ashton um, College of Art and Design. Um, did my... <laughs> did my time there, okay. worked for a little bit in England, worked for people, found that I wasn't very good as an employee. I'm mm. not a good employee. Yeah, that's, I, <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> so when I came to Canada um, um, as a young woman, I went to Calgary and uh, that was an amazing place to be. That was in the 70s, mm. wide open. They hadn't got anybody there with my kind of experience or creativity. It, they were hungry for creative people. So I really got to um, try my hand at all different kinds of things. I got to really grow and experiment. It was an amazing time, actually. Hmm. Yeah, I've, been, I've only been to Calgary twice, but, and then that was more recently, but I guess, I guess 30, 40, that was, yeah. yeah. But it's been a very different place. Oh, you're giving my age away. <laughs> you already did it. People can do the math. <laughs> Um, and so when you were building the commercial business, yeah. 
Uh, what, was, sorry, what was it called, by the way? Neutral Ground Studio. Got it. And so your the services were, to help me understand a little bit better, the services were uh, designing commercial space? Commercial that, that space. Um, commercial space in many senses. Uh, shopping malls. I did, I worked for wholesalers at uh, commercial uh, venues, you know, trade shows and that kind okay. of thing. Yep. So, um, yeah, we'd create a whole environments. Got it. And then how, how big of a team did you like, was it a, did you scale it up? Or was it, um, I was, like a boutique? <laughs> yeah, it was always boutique, but yeah. I always scaled up or scaled down. It was very seasonal work. Mm. Um, so everybody knew when the season was coming, the phone would start ringing. Is there any work? Right. So I'd always have a great team and I like to work with the same team over and over. So yeah, yeah, yeah that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I'm the same way. So. <laughs> um, cool. And then, so where, when did that business end? Um, I, well, completely killed dead mm. it was five years ago when I started this business. I was hanging on to the last client. All my eggs were in the one basket and I knew it was not good. Yeah. Uh, everybody else had fallen away and I had to do something else. Mm. So actually I got, um, it was my daughter again. She said, mom, you need to go and get some coaching. Mm. So go get a business coach. So I did and mm. uh, he helped me through that. Yeah. I worked with him for about a year and he made me do all the things I don't want to do. I think sure. something similar to what you're going to do today. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. We'll see where it goes. But no, good. And then so, and if you were kind of comparing the two in terms of like the way that you grew and had customers, is it, do you think about them the same way, even though they're kind of a different... You mean uh, more residential customers rather than commercial customers? Just in terms of like the development of the business. It seems like, you know, it... It seems like seasonally you probably had a lot of repeat customers with the old yes, business. Yes, it was all repeat, yeah. Yeah. And what was your main marketing strategy? What did you do? I'd just show up. <laughs> Fair enough. It was all to do, in those days, it was always to do with you got an account, you did well, they kept you on, it grew, and it, it, it's very different than today. Yeah. Very different. How, how so? What's the biggest difference you've found? Well, I have to do all of this um, online stuff now. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, every, everybody's in the same boat. Big learning curve. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah we, we work with a couple, even um, even charities that we work with. Um, we work with uh, People for Education, uh, Canadian Mental Health Association, or, or clients mm -hmm. of ours. And we were talking about the grant process. If they want to get a grant for a specific project. and. Uh, one of the things on the application form is how many followers does your charity have on Instagram? Really? It's everywhere. Really? Yeah. I mean, we work with, you know, actors and performers. Exact. And then them, it's more obvious that, that would be the case. But yeah, but even for th something like a charity, they want to know what your reach is on the internet before. Now they'll, they'll argue that it doesn't factor in. But why would you ask if it didn't factor in? Oh, sounds like I've got to start running. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so, but right now, but you still do, so do you do, or your daughter does most of the, your posting of that? Do you, do um, you play with I, it a I, I do all the little postings, like the everyday ones, or the every, if anything new comes up, or I'm doing a new project, mm. people like to see befores and afters, and yeah. progress, that kind of thing. Um, if I, um, if I'm doing something on my website, I get a professional photographer in, and they do a lovely spread for that and my daughter posts all that and does all the writing for that um we've just started doing something that i'm it was you suggested to her for the you, different business absolutely but yeah, yeah. and she said mom you need to do this so she got me going on that and we've she she's helping me to do that yeah and that's the, some pointers on how to do it yeah got it and that's the, the facebook ad piece facebook and instagram yeah yeah that's awesome yeah i know uh, we were just at the the brewery I guess it was two months ago. It felt like sooner, but yeah, it was about two months ago. We did a, we did one with them, and then uh, we're actually meeting with Chris about the real estate thing. I think on Thursday or Friday, so I'll see him soon. We'll be doing this again. <laughs> it's my favorite medium. I, I would do this all day, every day, if I had the option. Radio. Yeah, absolutely. Also on TV. On it's TV. Radio on TV. Okay. It's perfect. <laughs> uh, the, my motivation was because I'm a terrible writer. I I don't grammatical structures, spelling really poor 
So this is my medium instead of that. Cool. Cool. <laughs> um, and so, so right now, um, take me through like the process that you typically go through with a new client. That's like, a, is it mostly converting an existing home slash garage? That's like the vast majority of, of what you get. Yes. Yeah. Right now. Um, Laneway housing is a very new thing. It was only passed uh, last August where you can get a permit. It's permittable to build a building on a laneway. That's brand new. Right. Um, converting a garage, depending on what the usage is, you can either get a permit or you can't. Hmm. So um, for me, going to see a client um, is often just, just converting what is because it's brand new. The laneway stuff is coming though. Yeah. And so that... Um was that like a long was that a thing that took a long time to pass because there was opposition to it or just something that they never talked about before and they were all all, all of a sudden like oh laneway houses we should do those now well it's i think this is the first try mm. this no this is not the first try it's the third try mm. to go through um to go through local local council um they tried twice before but what they tried to do was uh, change existing bylaws whereas this time it got passed because what they've done is worked with what's existing they're not trying to change anything all they're doing is changing the fact that you can somebody can live in your garage got because it. of the housing crisis we have got it yeah and i guess there's a there's a, obviously with concerns with like trying to fit new plumbing into different places and that that wasn't you know retrofitting that into a house that's of a certain age i guess there's risks associated with that. It's very simple actually. Yeah. It's not oh. hard. Okay. Looks hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very quick. It's very quick. Oh. Yeah. There you go. And do you, are you involved, so obviously from the planning and design stage, but you've obviously got a bit of a construction background in a way. Well, that's from experience. I'm a designer. I'm not an architect. I'm mm. not an engineer. I work with an engineer. Okay. And um, an architectural technician. So, um, when and if we do get a laneway house, I'll, do, I'll work with the client to find out how the space is going to be used, what it's going to be used for. So um, form, always fo form always follows function. So the place will be designed to suit that particular client. Right. Then we go to the engineer who um, does the drawings for the city for permit and that kind of thing and comes and inspects, etc. But everything's based on what the client wants from an initial point of view. Got yeah. it, got it. And then, um, do you, you're involved with, uh, well, I guess with the conversions is a little bit different than, because a laneway home is like a brand new structure from nothing. It can be. Okay. Or you can convert an existing building as well. Got it. And then when you were, t we were talking, I can't remember if it was during or before the podcast, but we were talking about, Converting an existing living space potentially into like two living spaces or adding. Do you do, you do that within a home as well as the garage add-on or do you primarily? Um, well, right now, if you've got a garage on a laneway, you can have one extra living space. Okay. Okay. Um, the way it was before, you have a house and you could have, as of right, you could have a basement apartment. So now, as of right, you can have a basement apartment and a laneway house mm. with the along with the main house. Okay. Uh, what I've been working with, my initial concept came from um, suburban bungalows that have attached garages, which you can get a permit for, um, to convert those and change that into living space for a family member. So that's how it started and evolved. Got it, got it, got it. And so where do you get most of your like design inspiration ideas from? Online. <laughs> Pinterest? <laughs> Is it? House, Pinterest. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. amazing stuff on there. Yeah. Some wonderful work. Used to be the library. I used to go to the library. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do research at the library. Now it's yeah. Online. That's a, that's a change. Absolutely. Yeah. And and do you? Um, I know I've talked to uh, different industries, but similar concept where you have clients building conceptual ideas for you. Do you set them up with like a, a board that they pin stuff into as well? That's, that they can share. That, that was the old, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the, yeah. The old way we used to, they used to rip things out of magazines. Now yeah. Pinterest is is the way they just love it. Yeah. So and they share. They can yeah. do it from their phone. Yeah. Absolutely. They nice shared board. Yeah, yeah. I was talking uh, my friend of the bridal shop. Mm -hmm. We were talking about Pinterest as a, a resource. And then do you um, do you have your own? 
Pinterest account where you're posting your projects? Do you use that as like a social media for you? Um, I started out doing Pinterest. Um, I, it, it doesn't, um, no, I don't do it anymore. I used to put boards together on there and, you know, give them a name, etc. But I've not mm. done that in a long time. Instagram seems to be the one I gravitate towards and, and Facebook a little bit. Not, yeah. not as much, yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think you, so one of the misconceptions is that you can like you can repurpose stuff now you have to make sure that it's speaking properly you have to respect each platform in terms of the cadence and what you need to put there like instagram obviously is very visual first right. it used to be that facebook and instagram had different sizes so if you were to say oh i want to post on instagram but also let it go on facebook when you saw it on facebook it would be kind of be cut off weird and now it accepts the same size images so you can repurpose even easier now yeah. than you could before um, and so, and I, and I would say being in the space that you're in, the amount of content that you would have access to for Instagram is almost endless, <laughs> <laughs> right? From all your spaces. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What have you found to be the most effective? Like is Instagram from your experience, is, are you finding, finding in terms of like just getting attention or potentially bringing a new business? Have you found Instagram to be the, no, no, it's Facebook. Actually. Yeah. I guess because of the, you said that the, the older people love you. And I guess, and that's where they spend their time. Did I say that? You did. Uh, older people love me? Yeah. I never said that. I think you did. <laughs> did I, make, I couldn't have made that up. Um, I have to go back and see now. Um, but yeah, I mean, the older demographic, I guess a lot of people that own those homes, pay, Facebook is still kind of the dominant. For over 40 at least. I'm not, I'm not sure. Mm. I'm not sure. Um, I get a lot of likes on Instagram, especially now that I've been posting like I've been taught to. Good. Um, uh, but it's, it's the feedback I get from the phone calls, the phone calls I'm actually getting for potential clients are um, through Facebook. Mm. Yeah. I, yeah, I still use it for, from a conversion standpoint, from right. a, I'm trying to get business standpoint. I still use that as the dominant for my, especially for the ad platform. Mm -hmm. um, Instagram is great for getting mass eyeballs, mm -hmm. a lot of impressions, a lot of people seeing it. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, when I'm selling a product or service, I do find Facebook to You're be very effective. Really? Mm -hmm. Still, yeah. Now, counter to that, from the, the standpoint of like, I post something organically and then I want people to see it, it doesn't get a lot of visibility compared to Instagram. Instagram your posts get more visibility. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think I think part of it is because people have grown accustomed to being sold to on Facebook. They have an expectation of, oh yeah, I know I'm gonna get ads to buy stuff on Facebook, they're used to it. I think in Instagram, they're becoming used to it, but it's still not as prevalent. And if you think about from a marketing strategy standpoint, we post a lot of like, interest-based or entertainment-based stuff on there to drive people to come to the profile or to go to the website, not so much to like convert because it is image first and the copies, you know, nested down at the bottom. So you can't really do that much in terms of selling mm -hmm. with Instagram. So I use it for more of like a, a branding and awareness feel Got it. and then Facebook to convert. That's interesting though. And then so how long from kind of start to finish, I guess it depends on how much you have to build, but do you have a client like does it take What's your life cycle with somebody, like six months together? Uh, from beginning to end of yeah. a project? It depends how large it is. Yeah. Usually, um, if I'm, okay, if I'm moving a client from maybe downsizing in a house to, to a smaller space, which everybody's doing, I tell them it, it is a two-year project. Mm -hmm. From beginning to completely finishing. Right. That means every inch of the space is converted and designed. Mm -hmm. And people kind of go, Oh, that's too long, mm. but um, it's not. It's not two years every day. It's right. intense initially for about three months, and then you know, they realize, okay, we've got another room here. It needs to be taken care of. You know, you know small spaces. They need. They need to have a lot of storage, a lot of uh, pla places for everything to go. Yeah. You've got to. If you don't put your stuff away, that's fine. Right. But at least it has a place to go if you decide it's going to go somewhere. Otherwise, you're going to end up like most people with unbelievable amounts of stuff yeah are you a minimalist at heart no no i'm a big comfort freak everything's mm. about comfort Got it. Uh, but, but if you mean minimalist to, um as far as the basics are luxurious 
with everything else. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I'm, what am I? I'm a, what would you call that? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I haven't mapped that spectrum yet. But. I'm not a huge <clears throat> consumer. Sure. Got it. But comfort. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And, <coughs> sorry, I'm getting over a cold. And so when you're looking for new business, or do you have to look for new businesses? Do you get, like, a, from the standpoint of, like, where you're at and where you want to be, do you, uh, is it all kind of word of mouth? Do you ever, are you actively looking for clients, generally speaking, or? You mean, like, cold calling or knocking well, on just doors? Well, just in general. Like, if you, are, are you at kind of, like, 80% of the capacity that you, A, want to be, or, you know what I mean? For, oh, no, for I'm business. always looking for new business, always. Yeah. You got to keep the calendar full. That's right. <laughs> um, and so, how are you thinking about that now? Like, how are you? Um, what are your strategies? Like, what are you kind of doing now? Um, <laughs> I'm minimalist here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what am I doing? I've done all the things that I know to do online. Right? I've uh, printed pamphlets, beautiful cards with before and afters and, and all of that as handouts. I've got um, a, a lovely package to hand out to my clients. That's pretty well it. Sure. It is minimal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, from the online side, I know you don't have a, a, a particular love for online, um, but yeah, social media I think, you know, I think is, is important. Um, have you thought about doing things like Google Ads? Consider that no. I've never even heard of it. This is brand new for me. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So let's 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 unpack it a little bit because I think there's some ideas that at least can give you some idea of what is out there that I think okay. I can share. So um, and so and before I do that, from the video standpoint, do you have or can, do you have access to video content? Like, can you shoot? Like, do you ever shoot videos of your spaces as well, or do you primarily do pictures? Pictures. I've done interviews like this mm -hmm. that other people share. Yeah. No, I mean almost like a like a mini like commercial. Like do would you have this, like footage of spaces that you've done? Yeah, to, we could do, do like, that. Yeah, we could do it. So one thing that I was thinking about, so Google, you've used Google before. Yep. To find things. Yes. Uh, and it's, all, it's usually to research something or it's to buy something. Mm -hmm. So the way I would focus it for you in terms of how I think about it is you would want intent-based searches, somebody looking for the services that you provide. Okay. So a couple things you can do with that. If you're trying to bid on keywords like, like Designer Toronto, you're, it, the cost and the amount of comp competition is astronomical. Mm -hmm. There's so many people playing in this space. But what there might be, like what you do is very niche. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of other companies. Like, but starting now, I was the first. Sure. But this is, uh, you know, I see, I see it emerging do now. You? Yes. How many, how many competitors would you say do you have in the city? Or do you pay attention to that, really? Um, I've not paid a lot of attention. If something pops up online, um, you know, I'll, have a, I'll, I'll look at it yeah. a bit more. Uh, there's one other company that's really pushing right now for uh, laneway housing that is... Um, um, what they're doing is asking people to contact them to, to see if they qualify. Got it. Right? Mm -hmm. And I can see their content is borrowed. It's not anything they've done. Sure. Right? Yeah. And being an industry expert, yeah, it's, it's obvious to tell. But to be honest, a lot of times to the end consumer, we have no idea. No. If you're not in it, living and breathing it, yeah. then it's hard to tell. Yeah. So from, from the Google standpoint, I don't think bidding on keywords that are super broad would make sense mm -hmm. but there might be some that are like really focused on like um, specifically like laneway home designers mm -hmm. or um you know garage conversion designers which probably doesn't don't have a lot of searches mm -hmm. they're probably very few mm -hmm. but they might be an interesting place to position yourself to capitalize on it if your website doesn't show up so the, when I would recommend Google ads, is if I Googled, if you were to tell me I'm a customer, this is what I would search to find me. Mm -hmm. You have a sense of what that would be. Okay. So what I recommend doing is going on Google, searching for that, and seeing if your website's anywhere. Okay. Because there's a lot of factors that decide where, whose website's gonna go where. And even if you as a company are the most relevant, if Google doesn't understand it in its own language, you might not be there. You might be on page two or three wherever it can be. So if people, if you've got a couple of niche,
things that people would search to find you and you're not there, what you may want to do is to buy ad space there. Mm -hmm. And the way that Google ads work is, uh, so typically you do a search and the, the first four results are paid ads. Mm -hmm. And you write, you know, you explain who you are and you explain what, what the business does in that space. And if somebody clicks on that, it comes to your website, okay. then you pay. Okay. And what you pay is depending on who's bidding on it. So the reason you want to use keywords that not a lot of people bid on is because you don't want to pay a crazy amount of money for a click. Because one click to your website doesn't mean that you're going to get them as a customer. No. Right? right? People are going to research other companies. It might not be exactly what they thought it was. So when you, can, when you look at the difference of paying a dollar or two versus 10 to 15, it's like, oh, I need a whole bunch of, the more, the more people I can get on my site, the better. And especially if you're not trying to get 20 new leads, 40 new leads a month. If you just need a couple, then I would, I would think there's some really niche keywords. And what happens is it's an auction. Mm -hmm. So what you're bidding, you're saying, well, I'll pay 50 cents to be here. And this guy's like, well, I'll pay 75 cents for the same thing. They're going to be above you. And you kind of go back and forth and then... Uh, Google decides if you're more relevant than the other person you might be higher even though your bid is lower so it's kind of a it, it's all real time when you hit enter on that search Google runs several different things and it says uh, we're gonna put you here and you here and that's how it's gonna go um, as industries become more popular you will eventually over time have to pay more money so plumbing for example Plumbing, so if you were to search for a plumber in Toronto on Google, mm -hmm. it used to be that you could get a click for $10 or $9 or $15. But now there's big companies and they're all fighting for this top spot because they know if they get one click, it's likely that they're going to get that business right away. So the average click on the average click cost is like over $100 now for oh. one person to go to your website, which is ludicrous. <laughs> um, but in some industries, it exists that way. But I think there might be a space for you where it's like, again, really specific searches, like longer form searches um, that you might be able to position yourself for that okay. might be interesting. Uh, the, the reason I asked you about video is if somebody, because with your industry, with design as a whole, people often go and they want ideas or they want inspiration, right? And that's like that I'm looking for the ideas on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. So you want to stay away from searches that are research-based searches you only want like i'm looking for a designer to do this those okay. are the only ones but youtube is an interesting product um, and i'm sure you've watched mm -hmm. a video on there before but there's advertisements and there usually is a video before your video or a video at the end of your video or in between or in between yes so one thing you can do with youtube is and it's very inexpensive it's very very cheap to run mm -hmm. advertising on there but if somebody searches for that, that niche thing mm -hmm. that you represent, mm -hmm. you can also bid so that the next time they go on YouTube, you have a video in front of that person based on what they searched on Google. Okay. So you could record a video that speaks to like, hey, are you looking for someone to design your, design your small space? Mm -hmm. Here's some projects that we've done. So you, you could almost have a commercial that only serves to people if they search for that thing on Google. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So that might be an Smart. interesting, yeah, that might be an interesting place to play. I mean, we won't go into like the technical how-to, but conceptually, I think for the price that you would pay, it might be an interesting place to spend, you could probably spend 50 bucks a month and cover all of the searches. Because again, the niche amount of searches that happen for, those, for that particular thing, um, you could probably spend a very small amount of money and, and maybe get some attention out of that. Sounds so, good. Yeah. Sounds cool. Yeah, we use it. Um, we use it on from the podcast standpoint. So we've done, you know, hip hop artists and different things, gyms and personal trainers. So if somebody goes on Google and searches for marketing or con social media ideas for a personal trainer, it's probably someone that's looking to promote their business. And we don't necessarily want to buy a, an ad on Google because I don't have anything that I, I'm not looking to have them hire me, mm -hmm. but they might get use out of my content. So the next time they go on YouTube, the video pops up that says marketing ideas for a personal trainer. And they're like, oh, this is great. And then we're getting people to watch mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I'm using it as a branding exercise, but I think if you shot a 15 to 30 second commercial, and I don't, I don't mean a commercial in a traditional yeah, something sense. Something to give away, maybe. Yeah, just something that says, hey, you looking for this? Like, we're great, we've got this little boutique business, here's some before and after, just a 30 second clip that kind of showcases what you do. 
I think it could really work for you. Okay. Yeah. It's a challenge. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, shooting commercials, a lot of people shoot them in the way that they know commercials, which is like the old way, which is TV, and they don't translate online very well. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen, like been served a, a video ad, whether it be on Instagram or as you're scrolling through, you'll see, you know, you see advertisements. The, the things that perform the worst are usually those big, open, generic, fake TV commercials obviously generally look very fake. Mm -hmm. They're very staged. Mm -hmm. And they don't usually play on social media as well because mm -hmm. people, there's an adverse reaction. I don't know what it is, but um, that's generally how it works. Authenticity, is that? Yeah. And, and it could, and like, you know, you can be creepy with that YouTube ad. You can be like, hey, did you search for laneway home designers on Google? And they're like, how the hell did you know that? It, it gets their attention fast. I wouldn't go that extreme, but like, hey, you're looking for a laneway home? You know, we're a boutique company in Toronto. We've worked on some great projects. We've got to, you know, here's some, here's what our customers say. That could be a 20 second little spot that would be reasonably easy to put together. Okay. Yeah. I can do it. Cool. Um, cool. Uh, what else? So Google Ads, YouTube Ads. I, I think if you had somebody that could execute them, you could have your daughter play around. She can call me. I'll tell her. To do it. Um, <laughs> okay. Just from a lead generation standpoint, if if it is constant, if you are constantly looking for for new leads, you know, we talk to some people where, um, you know, I've got my set amount. And I'm not looking. I'm just looking for the odd consultation here and there. Or some people that say, hey, I'm trying to grow from five people to 100 people. And it's mm -hmm. a very different suggestion, mm -hmm. what I would say in terms of like how you would actually do that. But I think, I think Google and the YouTube thing, you could spend, you could play with it for spending like $100 a month. And do well. Do well, yeah, especially if you keep it fairly niche. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to mention was in terms of, the business that you have, you say you get a lot of repeat. Mm -hmm. What would you say that your that repeat rate is? Um, well, everybody that's a client mm -hmm. comes back. Is that a hundred percent? That is a hundred percent. So, what's the what is the the, the, the service that comes at the second half of that? Like you've done the design, and then what do they need you for the next time? Or is it a new space? Or different area? Um, okay, when it's a residential space, when it's somebody's home, hmm. there's always something new to do. So um, when I've worked with people in the past in this regard, they come back because they want the main floor done, the, the, you know, the, the second floor, a new home, a new office. Sure. That's how it comes. Got that's it. a repeat. And do you have any kind of rules? And they're not always old. And the witch? They're not always old. No, I, <laughs> I don't think I made it up. Maybe I did. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> um, and, and so how do you, do you have any methods right now about keeping in touch with existing clients? Um, yeah, we go for lunch, you know, old school. Yeah. We go for lunch. I call people, you know, catch up. Actually, um, messaging is really good for that. Staying yeah. in touch. How are you doing? Is everything okay? Yeah. And do you use any, um, uh, do you use any tools just from like the operational standpoint? Do you use any tools to kind of like plan and think about like basically to plan and execute that? Any apps? You mean, no, you mean, you mean be, a, be kind of a little more um, uh, organized about it? You yeah. Mean, or do you like, just kind of like, who? I shouldn't talk to Charlotte in a while. I should call her. That's, it's most spontaneous, yeah. Yeah. I've been, uh, I downloaded an app on my phone called C O O C O U V E or something like mm -hmm. that, and what it does is it pulls in your contact list, mm -hmm. and then it's and then it goes through and surveys you about your contacts and says how often do you want to keep in touch, and so some people never they're just like random old contacts that I don't care about, but some of them are you know the friends and people I talk to all the time I don't and I don't use them for that, but what I do use it for is certain clients or prospects or people that I've kind of kept in touch with where I say, hey, once every month or once every quarter or once every half year or once a year. And so what the app does is it'll send up a little ping and say, hey, you should get in touch with this person. Oh, cool. And it just triggers me to go and a good idea. do it. Yeah. So follow up. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of for that. Uh, I, I C U V E. Uh, C O U. I'll show you it on my phone after okay. I co cove cove. Something like that, but yeah, from like the the client, client kind of a client management side, like 
how to keep in touch. And, and it depends on who you are. I personally have a horrible memory, so I need it to make me function. <laughs> so you, you might not have the same problem, but um, yeah. Okay. And then do you have uh, a referral program? Do you do anything like that? Or do you just... A referral program? I don't know, yeah. I don't even know what that is. No, so like if you were to say, uh, like a pro, so uh, if, if you had a client that you did work with, yeah. and then they referred you to someone else, yeah. some companies will have a program where you'll like get, they'll get something. I do, I do yeah. have a referral program. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm a painter. I paint. Ah. So um, I, I always do a painting for a client. Hmm. Right? So um, I just finished two, two paintings for somebody that has given me a lot of business. So she got a couple of that. And people want that, right? Yeah. Unique art. Well, they, and it fits in with what, what I do. Yeah. What I do. That is the most unique referral program I've ever experienced. <laughs> I've never heard of really? that before. Yeah. <laughs> You I'll be doing you a painting. No. You will? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. So play nice. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I mean, I think, you know, not everybody's incentivized or super motivated. Like, in my industry, people want, like, you know, and in, in a lot of tech, people want, like, kickbacks or different things. Oh, you 10% or mm -hmm. monetary bonus or bring on X amount of people and you get something for that. Like, that's more commonplace in the industry and... It's, it works, but like it, the painting thing is really interesting when you're talking about my incentive to send you somebody. Like I might not care about your, your couple of dollars you're going to kick me back or the bonus, whatever. But having a unique piece is an interesting way to do it. Um, I've not encountered what you were talking about. What I've encountered is if somebody's really happy with what I've done, the referral is a natural yeah. thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, the painting just comes as a as a thank you yeah. basically yeah and I do feel you know most referrals would have to be like because you did a great job and yeah. they really liked you um, and it, it depends on what industry I guess I was just, I, I don't know the experience from your industry so I was wondering if that was like commonplace like a, like financial kickback or different things like that or if it's not like that a common commission or, no yeah not really not really okay I like the painting thing a lot. I bet you get a lot of positive feedback. I'll that. show you my paint, my latest later. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think we covered a lot. Did we? I think so. You happy? I feel like I'm. Are you happy? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You've given me some good tips. Cool. You've given me a couple of good tips there that will be challenging for me. Good. Uh, going in front of the camera is not an easy thing, so. Yes. I am taking acting lessons. Are you really? I am. How's that going? It's good. Yeah. It's good. We're doing an exchange. Hmm. She's an actress. And you painting? Or are you no, doing I'm gonna I'm gonna do her her lower level. She wants to use that as a, a training space. Got it. So um, she's helping me, I'm helping her. Got it. And so is that like like how you picture it in the movies? Is that like you go and you like say like weird lines and you make sounds with different pitches and like or how no, Does basically what she did was, uh, what she started with doing was uh, making me talk about myself, mm -hmm. which is not an easy thing sure. for me, uh, talking about myself. And she did, pitch was an important part. She'd sit with me and actually, if she knew I was doing this without her, she would not be happy. She would want to be sitting there directing <laughs> me. And, um, and, and then she has these colored cloths that she assigns um, emotion to for each part of the thing, you know, my biography that I'm speaking about on camera. Okay. And that was interesting because you, you hold the piece of fabric and um, it reminds you of the kind of emotion you've got to express with that particular portion of Hmm. That'd be very challenging for me. Yeah? I'm very monotone in <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't get overly excited. I don't get, I don't know. Yeah, that'd be very different. No, well, she doesn't want me to get excited. <laughs> right. She just wants me to remember the feeling. Mm. Interesting. Not that I'm going to be an actress. It's, right. it's about expression. Well, what was your main motivation for doing it? Was it just because you wanted to be, you knew you were going to have to be a little bit more. I saw camera myself facing. on camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, oh, shit. Uh, I need help. Yeah, yeah. I need help. So, and, you know, I'm being, and I'm being led. To doing more of this kind of thing yeah it's in my way all the time and i can't keep backing away sure i have to move forward i have to try yeah well and i think you know there are benefits depending on who it is and what the show is but it's a platform right i mean if you think about 
you don't know who's going to watch what I put out. That's right. And it could very well be someone that's like, oh shit, I'm in the process of doing this. Yes. I need somebody. And then... They, that's right. Lead generation. right? It's just, it's just branding and awareness for you. Yeah, we all need help to be ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so I'm curious, a little curious about this, the acting. How long have you done? Have you, how many sessions have you done? Um, I go to see her about once a week. Okay. And we've been doing it now for about four months. Got it. So if I had talked to you four months ago, you would have been more camera shy, do you feel? Do you feel like it's helped well, you? Well, I think I, I don't know. I don't know yeah. how I'm going to come across on this because I never know. But I was yeah. very wooden, very mm -hmm. wooden, no expression, really kind of. Yeah. Well, you okay. were a joy to talk to. So. <laughs> Thank you. I think it was good. All right, perfect. Well, thanks so much for coming. I know, it was, uh, I know you got tossed into it by your daughter and son-in-law, uh, but I really appreciate you coming and sharing your story. and. Uh, if there's anything I can help with in the future, let me know. I will, and thanks for asking me. Thanks.